Hi there, my name is Victoria Bowler and today we are talking about program prep. If you have ever created your own informants or musical presentation instead of using a pre-packaged program, then you've probably encountered some of the questions that we will talk about today. So for example, what happens if you are a few weeks out from this production date and you still don't quite know every single detail about what you're going to do on stage? Um, or how are you going to structure the songs at the event? Who will play which instruments? And how are you going to decide what musical skills you want to showcase? These are some of the things that we'll talk about in this video. This is a conversation that I had with my friend Jen, who is doing a first grade music informants, and I will add the link to the informants that we're talking about in the description below. The prep for this informants has been just the regular daily music class activities that Jen has already been doing. And that's because again, this is an informants and an informants is designed to show a typical music class. Now, that said, in this conversation, we were at the point where we needed to start thinking about taking a typical music class in a classroom context and think about what that transition will look like for that typical music class to be presented on stage in front of the parent and other adult community at her school. So moving from a typical music class in a classroom context to a presentation context. If you've ever felt overwhelmed by program prep, like your brain is swimming with too many tiny decisions and you feel kind of stuck on how to facilitate your program ideas, I think you'll enjoy this conversation. So let's jump in. Now I'm trying to basically hone it in exactly what activities will I do with each song for the show. Yes. Oh my gosh. I know because then your brain goes like this, like a million different directions. We've been doing like 20 iterations of each song over the past couple of months and we're just having a blast. So now how do I narrow it so that it looks like organized and presentable? Yes. And that's the, that's the um, dance of an informants, right? Like if you were doing a true informants, you would just set up chairs in your room and people would come see like the beautiful chaos, right? But because you're doing like a polished informants, you want it to have like the feel and the spontaneity of a regular music class without the true chaos of, of what that would be like if you just did a regular class with no prep for the kids about what yeah, it's like. So to hopefully no one will cry. Yeah. Basically, hopefully no one's crying when they don't get picked. You know, that kind of thing. Oh, I do. <laughs> I do. Yes. Let's go to Zapatitos Blancos. So I have for this one, we're speaking the rhyme and playing the game. And then we're using like different voices. What's your thought with Zapatitos Blancos? Yeah. So we're going to have the children with their toes out and one suit in the middle tapping. Um, and then once they're it, they're going to choose a voice, which I've made chart, like little photo, like um, icons, colored icons. So they're going to pick it up off the floor. Obviously, we don't do that in class, but that's for the stage. So they'll, and they'll swing it around for everyone to see. Go again. Beautiful. So that was the stage adaptation, I guess, really. Yeah, smart. Just the thing. That's really um, smart because adults won't know like what those silly, they'll, they'll be like, why are they yeah. doing those silly voices? Right. So like that's, that's for the adults. That's super smart, Jen. Excellent. One thing you look like you have something to say. I was going to say, and then I was kind of asked, this is what I was going to ask you about. So like, I was going to say, what if the part A is the game, we do the feet and then the part, it chooses the next voice, but then uh, they all have rhythm sticks and they play the rhythm for part B. So then we'll do da, 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 da. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, yeah. And their inner singing playing the rhythm and then they put their sticks in their lap and the next person does the feet. So is that too busy? Is that too much? I guess that's kind of one of the reasons I reached out. Like, is it, should I keep it more simple? Okay. okay. So I have a couple thoughts. My first thought is I love that. I think that's a great idea. I think that you can choose. Well, one of, let me say something else that I like about it. Something else that I like about it is that it kind of extends the rhyme. And to your point, it's something that you're already doing, right? It's something that like is true to a, a first grade class. We would be doing rhythm of the words and inner hearing, right? Love it. Um, the transition between your A section and your B section, I see in my mind that getting 
kind of wonky about so we're going to finish the rhyme tienes two okay and and how old are you and you go around the circle and you know i'm six years old so you are out so you're the one who picks the next voice for the next round of the game mm -hmm. but then we've lost the momentum of the piece in between you picking the voice and the card mm -hmm. and okay. us speaking or us inner hearing and doing the the rhythm sticks do you know what I mean? The other thing yeah. I know about you, Jen, is that you are very, one of your strengths, and I know this from working with you, is that you are so good at taking one little concept and expanding it to be 37 different things, right? It's like taking a little song and expanding it to, to a million different opportunities and like different divergent pathways. Like we could do this, we could do this, we could do this. Like that's not a struggle that you have. A lot of what I know from you is you're like, let me think about how to make this smaller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, focus. focus. Um, yeah. So like one of the things with the game, I changed that, that they choose a number from one to 10 because they're all pinning. Yes. <laughs> and, and we count in Spanish. Okay, I love it. I so, love it. So maybe we should just let it be like counting in Spanish and not do the rhythm. I don't know. I think that you can pick if you want it to be the rhythm of the words or if you want to do the four voices. Okay, I got what you're saying. So just pick maybe one thing. And the other thought for me is as I'm looking at this, like from 30,000 feet, is that each class has three little songs. And so I'm trying to make sure they're all doing like an even, evenly distributed yeah. amount of stuff. So I may have a class that's doing bases, xylophones, and alto xylophones, and blockers, and melody, I don't want that to outweigh this other class who's just picking a voice. I completely agree. But yeah. although that's kind of how you did it through the program, you know, how you did the Herald program was that these are some concepts that are earlier, and then they build throughout the show. So that's yes. probably maybe what's the, the balance and equality of what each class is demonstrating is probably what's making me think about all of those layers of things. I agree. I think you're very, I think you're very smart to think about that. So you're going to do Zapatitos Blancos. You're going to do Hunt the Slipper and Sally Go Round the Sun with the same group. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, great. Okay. So what are we, let's, let's answer this rhythm sticks question by thinking by looking about at what else they do. Okay. Got it. So there's some push and pull that we talked through here with making sure that classes were at least somewhat even in our instrumentation. Now, I always appreciate seeing how other people organize their thoughts for programs, how they organize their programs in general. So as we were talking, I was just curious about what Jin was using and if we were making our notes in the same way. And then this turned into a really good discussion about the role of the teacher on stage during the informants. And Jin, just so that you and I are on the same page, what are you making your notes on? You have like a, like a scrap piece of paper. Okay. That's fine. You're, fine. you're allowed to use whatever you want. <laughs> the chart that I made yesterday when I was pulling all my thoughts together, I'm a very pencil paper lady. I love um, it. Can I, know, can I see I, your chart? Oh I know gosh. Everybody wants, everybody wants to okay. see it. All right. So I used your script first and I just wrote in exactly what's happening so that my mental flow could be there. And then I did a pull out of the, okay. So this class, We'll be doing A, B, and C in this class. So I could kind of highlight, and that's when I started looking at like the equity piece. Yes. Is everybody doing an equal amount of stuff? Mm -hmm. so and I will, I love that. I love that. And yeah. in when I did this informants, I had this printed off because I needed to know what was coming next. And I couldn't remember what was coming next. But then mm -hmm. on that side column where you were like writing your notes, I yeah. had mm -hmm. the the form of the song that's going to be A, B, C, and so and so needs to go over here, and so and so is going to this, okay. et cetera, et cetera. So okay, so I have more space. I think what I've done, I've just written in along beside the song, the high like the activities. And then I still have the space beside the script where I could write the names. Is that yes. what you're thinking? Okay. Yeah. Or any like any extra notes that you know that you're gonna need to remember okay. at the at the event, you know. And I just had a I had a clipboard and I just walked around with the clipboard and I always knew where the clipboard was and I would look at it and see like what's coming next, who needs to go where, all of all okay. of that stuff. And that reminds me, you were on the stage. Yes. Oh yes, because I'm in the classroom. Yeah. And um 
I'm on stage because I'm in the classroom and when kids go to the wrong spot, because they do, because this is not a performance, um, then I would say so-and-so you actually need to be over here or the kids will catch it or, or something like that. Like the, the point is that these are real live children, you know, (laughs) they are not, they're not performance robots, you know? And so, and then the other thing with that, Jen is like, I'm calling, I'm snapping my fingers and I'm calling stuff out and I'm like standing up and sitting down and I'm moving around and I'm like, I'm dancing with them. And I'm like, okay. you know, all of, all of that stuff. It's, it's exactly what I do in the classroom, including saying xylophones, try that again. Here you go. Oh. Up, 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 up. Right. And the one, uh, yes. That, and all this. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Apple tree. And they're going to do the circle with the bridge, and they're going to do a forte and piano. Beautiful. And I thought I would put Tubano on that as well for steady beat. Love it. Love it. Yeah, as and long as... The easy rotation, because whoever gets caught slides over to the drum, and then they scoot on down the round. So I've been doing that one. Excellent. Yeah, so that one will be easy. Also, the the choosing, you know, that's one of the questions that you and I have been talking about is like, do you do you choose ahead of time who's going to be on mm-hmm. these like really important instruments, you know, um, and for something like Apple Tree, it's kind of embedded in the game, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, that's a good point. And then Charlie over the ocean. We are going to have um, some students playing the melody. Look at you. Mm-hmm. Blockage field because that's my last direction. Uh-huh. Eat, 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 up, up, and then they go down, down. So love okay. it. Yeah, so they can do that. Um, and so then we do like a shake, shake for which direction while we're singing. So there's going to be a few students. I would say these could maybe be ringers, and yep. not everyone's going to get rotated through. Can you like sing it and do your motion? Are you saying like as I'm playing Charlie over the ocean, and everybody else is oh. echoing while they're doing this? Like yeah, so we direction. Do Charlie over the ocean, Charlie over the sea. So that reminds them that which notes they're doing on the bottom, you know. So we just do steady Excellent. and flick, flick. Good, good. Okay. Um, those slides where it's like, watch for this, listen mm-hmm. for this. That's yes. something with the, right? That's something to highlight for parents. So watch, like we're not just flapping our hands this is showing the melodic contour of the melody. And that's the whole basis of how we okay. interact with melody at all is because we have an understanding of when pitches are going up and when pitches are going down. And when you know when the pitches are going up and going down, then you can figure it out by ear and you can play it on a barred instrument or you can talk about it with other musicians or et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. Okay. And I actually wrote that in my notes, melodic contour, but I would actually just assume like people would know what we're doing, but I yes okay so on the baker shop i'm reading my notes yeah it's so uh, to keep flowing in my head all these things. i know i just had them today what did we decide let's see it's going to be a locomotor movement um so they're i have the they're going to hold again the leader is going to like hold up a pick up a paper that says waddle 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 or swim 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 how they're getting to the baker shop um, so they stand and sing, and then they do the free space with that locomotor movement, and then they have to get back to the spot. Um, and then I have the xylophones doing steady beat with C and G, just steady beat. Just because I think because I started adding in a few things when I was like, okay, this is a little game heavy. This group is a little instrument heavy, and so I'm trying to um, smooth that out. So I think that may be why I added those. Okay. So it look, the way you said that made it seem like you're still kind of chewing over an aspect of this. Is that true? Well, the funny part, I think I just solidified it this morning because I just okay. had them, but I figured it out last night. Like we needed more instrument opportunity. And so that's what I decided to do. Um, so that is going to be one of those rotation stations, you know, where I have, um, I guess, a question for you. Do I put all the instruments I have available in my room, I typically do fours. I don't know why it's my space. Yeah. Um, we do trains, and so I have four train stations, and so they get in their lines, and then they rotate for their turns. Um, when we're just focusing on playing the xylophone, and I think it's a new concept that some people will be doing xylophone, and some people will be playing the game. 
Yes. So that's why I think I'm all of a sudden thinking, oh gosh, because usually the stations are lock and go. They know how to rotate. So I'm wondering if I should do like a half the class sitting in stations and demonstrate even that we sit in those rotations and then have half the class do the movement. Yeah. So Jen, what you just said is there's something that I do in class all the time. Mm -hmm. These kids have it like they're, they're locked and loaded, ready to go. And this is how we rotate instruments in the class. And now your question is, should I do that on stage for an informants? And my answer would be, (laughs) yes. (laughs) I'm I'm, I'm figuring this out as I'm saying it, aren't I? Yeah. Uh, So stations at, at the Zylo for half class. I wouldn't mind if I'm, if I'm, um, in the audience, I don't mind at all. If you do down to the baker shop demonstration of moving to the baker shop, right. Mm -hmm. And then everybody comes to their circle and does the actual movement game down to the baker shop, hop, hop, hop. And I don't mind if it's like showing me how you do instrument rotations first, and then we put it with the game second. I don't mind that at all. So you independently highlight what it is, how we do it. Then we turn the attention. Also, there's a game and we can do these things at the same time. Okay. I don't. Yeah. And, and again, the question is like, what, what are you already doing? Yeah. And it sounds like the instrument rotation on its own is its own shebang, which it absolutely oh, is. Yeah. Today was the first time I tried to put the, that with the game. Yes. They're fine. They're, I mean, they did fine. I still have two rehearsals, so I'm like, we'll get it. <laughs> well, the next rehearsal, it has to be solid. The next two rehearsals, it has to be a definite. And like you said, like, I'm still ooh, ooh, figuring yeah. it out. Yeah. Well, and then the other thing is um, you're allowed to use this activity however you're using it in the classroom. It doesn't need to be what the PDF says. So if you're using this with instrument rotations, then I think that's fine on its own. Yes. And I, like, again, I think I stuck it in there. I don't think we've done this song with xylophone, but when I was looking at the overall thing, again, that balance, I was like, oh, how could I add another instrument component for this mm-hmm. class? If they have right. a few instruments. Okay. Okay. I'm with that you. Makes, does that make more sense? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Let me ask you this. As we're doing this rotation, you said they're in trains and you have groups of four instruments. I'm trying to visualize it in my head. What, what am I doing if I'm not the one playing the instrument? That's why they, that's why I call it a train because they sit behind. Got it. Yeah, so they just sit in a row. And so they'll sit in station one, two, three, or four, the first person play, they stand I'm up with you. I'm back with of the line and they move up. So it might benefit to just have like three kids and that's 12 kids. That's like half the class right there. And that at all actually it also dictates and defines that we we will sing the song, th- you know, three times. So that yes. might be good. Yeah, I'm thinking things through, I'm thinking things through in my, brain as we're as we're talking let me let me grab an instrument another option and this is you know the always the fine line we don't want to throw too much um without any sort of prep and again like the point Mm -hmm. is that we've been doing this in class so i say this not because i think we should switch to it or that you should switch to it absolutely Mm -hmm. but just to give another option so you can keep your rotations um I was envisioning that we were like in a, in a train and cause what I've done is I have stations set up at different, like in different corners of the room okay. and we just like walk around the room with, okay. like, you know, you'd have like five people over here, five people over here, five people over here, five people over here, and then you rotate. Oh, so that's what I was envisioning, but you are doing like, uh, like a relay race. Yeah, <laughs> which I've also done, but but never never like this. But one option is um, down to the baker shop, hop hop hop. For my mother said, buy a loaf of bread down to the baker shop, hop hop hop. And I'm just okay. playing those three pitches, uh-huh. or you know those three um, clusters, if you want to if you want to say okay. it like that. Um, one reason is this song has harmonic changes that are implied. 
Okay. So down to the baker shop, hop, hop, hop. For so, my mother said, I yeah. love a so bit. playing the same drone the whole time is not musically correct. Well, I would make the argument that you can decide that it is. Okay. And and then you'll have like this beautiful dissonance and it'll be like its own cluster okay. anyway, right? And you're allowed yeah, to do right. that. You're right. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to say, we did um, highlight that rest on there and one of the parts and we did like um, hand drums ones. Oh. And that's the thing. Like I've done so many things. Like, so then I'm, maybe we should just pull that out. Um, um, down to the baker shop. Bum, bum, bum. Instead of adding something new, bring in the instrument on that, which we have actually done before. Okay. All right. That might be better. You, I think from my perspective, you did. It. And I want to reiterate, Jen, like your, your idea of the Bordeaux is totally valid. Like, I, I don't think there's a single thing wrong with that. I think the question is, given all of the experiences that you could have people do, is this the Bordeaux song? Or is there a better Bordeaux song? Do yeah. you know what I mean? Because you've already done so much. Absolutely. Okay, I yeah, love yeah, yeah. that. And you can still do your stations. And I kind of love, I don't have a ton of unpitched in here. So maybe the hand drums would be a great thing just to highlight that we do that. Because again, the question is like, what are you already doing? Oh. That you can just transition onto the stage, right? And so if you're already doing the drum, if you've already done that, yeah, then I love it. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so good. Now... I, I don't have to add, like, I'm like, oh, add stuff. So this is good. Keep me. Um, <laughs> and then we do bounce high. So bounce high, I'm actually doing the ball. Great. Which, you know, it could go on the floor. And the other thing, I, I don't know what's going to happen with the ball. That's a, that's a wild one. Um, but we, we stand in a circle, we sing, the student leader bounces, you know, to themselves three times, passes it to someone on Shiloh. And then I actually, um, have, was thinking, and this is again, I'm, I'm recognizing my growing. <laughs> and so this is Jared, I'm hearing what you're saying. Um, I was thinking of adding the glossy spiel because we do the um so la so me so then I was figuring I was trying to figure out a way today of um bounce high bounce low one time singing and bouncing and then it takes them a second to pass out the ball and yep. get the new person in the middle and while yep. they're doing that we sing with hand signs and then the glockenspiels um play with the hand signs. Right. So it's kind of like an A B where it's like the bouncing and the singing the words. The B then is the hand signs and the glockenspiel while the people are switching out the bouncing. And so then I guess the bouncing gives me time to, to switch out the glockenspiel players too. I don't know. That's true. That's true. So this is this is what the, the stage time of the who's going where thing. Yes. Now yeah. let me offer okay, so with the thinking this through with the bouncing, you know, I bounce the ball to um, Jacqueline and then Jacqueline's in the middle. And since, are you saying like, since I just had the ball, now I go to a glockenspiel? I don't think so. I think I would have separate rotations. I would okay. think I would have some that are doing glockenspiel and some that are doing ball. Right. Let me tell you a couple thoughts. This is another area where I don't mind saying this group is going to play so la so me so so la so me on the bard instrument while the rest of the class is doing the Kerwin hand signs and then you say we also have a game that goes with this and then we stand and we play the game oh so just talk it through more instead of it i keep think i'm getting like one two ready go yes so i have to just like set them off and they have to know how to do it but the whole point of it is to talk through and guide through Okay, yeah. so I like that idea. All right, so all right, so we would do the okay, say that again. Let me see what you're thinking. The soul finish with glocks and then have the game. And then would you ever put it together? That's up to So you're saying okay, sitting with hand signs. 
but not sawfish. You you can do it with sawfish if if that's what if that's what you're doing okay. in your class, right? Like if that's what mm -hmm. if that's what we're showing in in your curriculum. Okay. So we could kind of do a verse of the word, the lyric, and then do the sawfish, mm -hmm. and then we go to the blocks, and we do the hand sign, and then we say there's a game. Okay. That's so it's just it's kind of I'm trying to put it all in one and you're saying go ahead and like unlayer it like we do this and we do this and then we do this and now we're done. Why yeah, am I, I trying to make them all happen sync at the exact same time? Yes, that's yeah. that's my that's my that's thought. Like go ahead. Or level one, but they're not in first grade. Well, and and right? they'll be there, right? Like they will be there. This if you do, you know, not Harold, but whatever your informants is for your current kindergartners, they'll have a very different set of skills than, yeah. than these kids will. Right. Yeah. And I want to say, Jen, like, I don't mind the idea of putting it all together. If it were me, yeah. I would have it all together, but I would say like, there's two kids on a xylof or on a bard instrument and everybody else is just playing the game. Okay. Right. And at some point while we're playing the game, I would say, let's sing on solfege while we play the game. Here we go. So la, so me. And nothing changes. We just change the words. Does that make sense? Oh, and I'm getting, even you're directing on the stage during the activity so they don't have to have it. Nothing's, nothing's like. Nothing exacting about, we're going to do it four times and Bobby's going here and Sue's going here and then nothing robotic, nothing exacting, but how we would make those changes. And I just demonstrate what I would do and how I get the, the cues classroom? and how they respond. Okay. Okay. That helps me a lot. It helps me a ton. Okay. Yeah. What's so the I'm going to think about unlayering. I'm going to think about unlayering, mm -hmm. separating, and, and speaking more. Yes. Direct, directing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that piece of, you know, and we, we keep using, um, you know, this verb is like, it's not a performance. It's not a performance. It's mm -hmm. not a performance. Right. But like, what does it look like to take a music class and present it to adults? Right. These are like the little things in your head where you're like, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. Or like, they have to memorize the form, like the sectional form. First we do this, then we do this, then we do this. And it's like, no, because that's not, that's, that's not the point. That's not the point. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. I think the language I said in the parent letter, I think I said, um, the, the, uh, and I am, informants is a new word and I'll train with being new and I'm new at them. And so that my, my people are not used to them. This performance is specifically designed to help introduce students to on stage performance and to show what we do in class each week. So then I think I'll start, I'll tease out the, the definition more when I'm actually there with the people. Um, but on this paper, I just wanted to make sure that I was stating it, you know, it's an introduction because yes. the little kids are saying, I'm scared. They're starting to say, I'm scared. So I do all my speech about nervous fear, which is healthy when we're in the bad situation, but nervous excitement. Uh -huh. So I have a whole um, feel, <laughs> but I don't want them, I don't allow them to keep talking about being afraid of being on stage. And so I just want the parents to feel comfortable. I think the parent will get the anxiety from the child. Do you know what you're doing? Not exactly. And then they're thinking I'm a cuckoo bird. So I just want to make sure that I'm training them up, that this is a little bit in process. But I am a little nervous about it, I think. That's what I was going to say. Do you think that you are feeling a little nervous? Yes, for sure. Yeah. Uh, not about being on stage. I'm nervous about the expectation that what this performance is going to be mm -hmm. and that everyone should know exactly where to go and where to be. Mm -hmm. And I just, I need to just take the lead in confidence that that's not what we're doing. It. This is not what this is about. And so um, I'm tiptoeing through that uh, maybe as we're going down the road. And even the first grade teachers, um, you know, they have ideas about what this should be. So, I think all of that is feeling like a little pressure to me. So I'm new to informants and I'm trying to introduce it, you know, to a community that it's new. Yeah. Yeah.
Well, this is the reason that uh, this production is a little bit more polished than just like opening your classroom and having a bunch of parents come in, right? It's because, mm -hmm. you know, my previous teaching situation and that I walked into a, it, yeah, exactly. it was a, it was a very established program. And so what I would have rather done is just have like, um, you know, just like an open music class and everybody comes and like, we all do the dances together. And the parents are like literally taking hands with everyone. We're literally and doing Alabama that. gal. Exactly. That's what I want. But be, because of that situation, it wasn't, it wasn't the right setting for, for my grand vision of just like mm -hmm. show up and have family music in the music classroom. Right. That's what I want yeah. to do. And so this is kind of bridging the gap between stand on the risers and sing music that you've memorized versus mm -hmm. move around on stage in community showcasing what you are learning the difference is mm -hmm. what have we memorized versus what have we learned i don't have any interest in teaching the audience about what we've memorized by rote right that it's been all mm -hmm. teacher directed i have a lot of interest in showing the process of learning that learning is active you know oh i i mean i know it's the right thing no, I'm not I, saying it's the right thing. I'm saying that. <laughs> I'm excited about it. I, I know it's going to be great. Um, and I think after I do it once, we do it once, then it's going to be understood. Well, and Jen, like you're making, you're making a new tradition. Yeah. Yeah. I'm building something new. Finally, I'm in a good place to do. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to be Fabulous. I would just while we're here, while we're camping out on it, uh -huh. um, I would encourage you to write out exactly how you want the show to be perceived. Okay. And I would incorporate that into the notes that you share at the beginning, even though I get okay. the sense that you don't really want to share anything at the beginning. Like you want it to just be like all, um, you know, it's not, not like the gin, the gin show, right? I get the sense no. that like you don't really want to do a lot of speaking, which I think is understandable, but I think having like a very clear leadership from, from the stage that says mm -hmm. the purpose of a performance is to showcase a polished product. Mm -hmm. The purpose of an informance is to showcase the learning process. And mm -hmm. those are two different things. This is not a performance. This is an informance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will definitely, I gotcha. <laughs> thank you thank you for that just to camp out here for a second because i think jen touched on something that is very important and very relevant uh, and that is how we are going to communicate this informants to parents and colleagues and administration and school board members and you know the community outside our school so this is the email that is included in the informants product this is the invitation to the event it says each music class, your young musician is actively involved in singing, playing, speaking, and moving. To show you all the fun and learning that takes place in our music class, we are thrilled to invite you to our kindergarten and first grade informants. An informants is a program designed to educate the audience on a specific musical topic. At this informants, your musician will teach you about all of the things we do and learn in music class. Join us for a musical morning or evening to see how we learn through play, exploration, and collaboration. This is fun. Okay, you're getting me excited now. I'm excited. <laughs> it's all just been like a lift, you know, to get to the end, but it's going to be fun when we get on stage. So what's next? Doggy doggy, this one's old as dirt. We've been doing this one since kindergarten, so they were so excited when we brought it back. And we are playing um, Melody. So we do this, and I'll, I'll take your cues from what we previously discussed. We could do um, the game and the playing it with the bass steady beat and the melody on the alto xylophones first, and then we could sing it and then we put it. So I could kind of, I'm seeing that as a pattern, breaking all that apart. Yep. But we have the solo singer, which I think is the only solo singer scenario I have in this whole thing. Yeah. Um. So that that's a pretty big deal, but I, I was just so prolific when we were playing, just to hear the matching pitch and- Aww. Oh, 
of Carl, who has a voice like this, was in the head voice. And I about, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, my. like, I get excited. I know. So I know. It's, it's fun. Okay. So I think well, that I'll Janet, break it apart. Just to, just to say, like, that's another thing to highlight is to say, like, mm-hmm. matching pitch is a learned skill. And kindergarten yeah. musicians do not come to class knowing with with the skill development of matching pitch. And when they yeah. enter into first grade, this is a skill that we are continuing to refine. This is another example, Jen, about like if we were just standing on stage regurgitating something that we've memorized, oh, parents no one would know how great this moment was. That's it. This is parent yeah. education. Yeah. Yeah. And then singing by themselves. Oh gosh, yes. That's a huge one. Yeah. And there's yeah. there's so much there's so much happening on stage with doggy doggy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. Okay, good, good. For that class, then they get to do Here Comes the Bluebird too. Yeah, that's a good one. That is, I love that song. Yeah, so same, it's, it's another game. And I think I added in the Alta Zal phone on the B and G. I didn't even look at them. Is that going to work or something? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Um, okay, now I always layer, and I, I think I was going to add something, and I think now I already know not to. Um, <laughs> well, what were here? you? What were you going to layer? Because well, what what I will say about the Bordeaux is that there is an implied one five harmony, but to my ear, depending on the Bordeaux pattern that you're doing, I don't think. I mean, first of all, the Orf police are not coming to get you no matter what you do, right? But I don't think that it will clash. I think I think this is, um, you know, like pentatonic enough that, that you'll be, okay. you'll be fine. Um, so the improvisation was is on the slide, the question and answer improvisation. And so I was like, I don't think we've done enough of that, um, but I could pick a ringer that could do it. I mean, I can prop that up. So I guess that was the question I had. Should I just well, go ahead and do the game? We're walking. We have the weaving person. They choose a partner. And I'm not having them make a train. I'm having them just turn around spots. And then the next person is the middle. And yes. there's a lot of different ways to do that one. Yes. Um, okay. So yeah, I, I don't. Just... Go ahead. I think I'll just do that. So I probably just need to change the slide on that one and take out the improvisation. Yes. Okay. Yes, because the way I was doing it is I first of all I don't do the big uh, bluebird train with this song. I do that yeah, with I do that with um, bluebird bluebird through my window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they're so close, aren't they? They're so similar. Um, this one, you take a little partner and you go to the middle and you hop in the garden. Hey, mm-hmm. diddle dama day day day. Those two students stay in the middle, and there are two xylophones already just set up in the middle oh. and then they just play ba, 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 da, 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 da. and then the other one answers and it goes back to that one they go that one oh. right and then the person who just came they they switch off so like no one's the bluebird twice but they will just switch off like that oh so i could do it well i would i would caution you i would give you the advice that you just gave yourself which is like we yeah. haven't done it so yeah. but this is something jen because like you're gonna you're gonna finish the informants you're gonna be like okay so now what but if this is something that you can see in your in the back of your head, like wheels are turning, like oh, I, they could do this, like we could do something like this, mm-hmm. then this and is now. That's my lesson until June when we get out of school. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, good idea. You know, I like that one. All right, so that class has a little bit of xylophone. They have some melody, and they have the ostinato. So that's a lot of playing. Oh, yeah. That class has a lot of length. Okay. And then we see, I see the moon, and I have finger symbols on the breast. Um, I work a lot on doing the um, steady beat and twice as fast and twice as slow. Mm. Okay, so this one, I was having them do the xylophone twice as slow. It's tough. It's not... It's not awesome, um, but that's what we were that's what we were working on. I love it. So the bass xylophone is doing kind of a, an elongated chord bordoon. Great. Yeah, we have yeah. finger symbols yeah, we, and finger symbols on the rest. Great. 
And I was doing um, the improvising on the Glock where, like you said, with like the, um, you had mentioned it on that other song with the ding, dang, dong, like right. any notes you want. Um, but I was having them do like a melodic one. Love it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at my notes here. Um, some students play the rhythm of the song on barred instruments, improvise uh -huh. any notes in the pentatonic scale. So and move in free space. Yeah. Yeah, so something like, I'm in a different key than, than you'll be, I'm sure, but. Ding. Ding. Right. And I have them move and freeze. So Love that's it. a cool thing I do too. Oh gosh, Jen, that's going to be so cool. It's like, now I'm telling it to you and I'm like, and, and, and. <laughs> like, okay, so if anything is not working out when I get on stage, Pull it apart and leave stuff out. I just need to tell myself that. Pull it apart, leave stuff out. Yeah. yeah. So with this, with I see the moon, what's the thing that you'll that you'll leave out? Like if there's one element that you're like, man, I don't know about that. Um, probably trying to get those bases to play twice to split. Because <laughs> I already know that's a challenge. Great. So let's but say the movement, so they're already doing singing, they're already doing movement, and they're responding to when to move and when not to move. Yep. Because the, then um, it's an A-B thing. And then during the part where they're not moving is when the Glock and Shabiel's improvise. So Excellent. I just, just leave the base. I just, I know that already. I'm making that decision. Yay! Because <laughs> I already am like, even when I told it to you, I'm like, the why? Okay. Why? So then, why? Yeah. We made it through. I know. Okay. So wrapping up with five minutes or so. Last, like, little pieces on your brain. Oh, I think I'm good. I think the whole, I, okay, so first of all, our time spent was probably a little different than either one of us anticipated it would be. Um, because I still needed to work out exactly what activities I was trying to do too much. So that is a tremendous help. And I feel very, very good about it. Um, and now I feel a little bit more laser focused when we get to the stage space next week. Um, if anything is not working, then I just take it apart. Take it apart. Separate it out. Yep. And and I get to be there. And I get yes. to direct. And I get to lead. And so I don't have to feel. And I don't have to feel anxious about this at all. It's, yes. You know, it's good fun. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I do appreciate you advising me to literally write out my script of all the things so that in that moment, the, the thank you for being here ramble doesn't miss anything that I really care about. So writing that script will be on my list and I'm going to let the students spontaneously rotate and choose and, and let that be what it is. And since now I know I'm there using my mouth, yes. <laughs> I'm using my voice. It makes it a lot easier. I think I was trying to picture me not on the stage. And so that eases my mind a little on the idea of who is where and who's doing what. And if one round is not, you know, not quite on the steady beat, I can still control that with my singing. And, mm -hmm. and I'm right there in the mix. So mm -hmm. I don't need to know exactly who it is. So that was one of your questions is, do I, do I stack the instruments with ringers mm -hmm. and my, and, and I didn't give you an answer in that email. I was like, well, let's talk it through. Right. Mm -hmm. Because like, it will totally, it'll totally depend on what you're doing with the yeah. activities. Right. So for a lot of these gin, I don't just to, just to make sure I've said, I like the idea of knowing ahead of time, who's going to do what instrument, if it's something that matters. But with a mm -hmm. lot of this, what we've talked about is it, it doesn't, it won't really matter. You know, we don't want fights on stage and we don't want um, people to cry on stage. So, so that's what I would be thinking through is like, yeah. if someone's going to get out in a game, then the game has kind of taken care of it. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But maybe um, the getting out goes to an instrument. Yes. And so then therefore, I don't know who's going to be on the instrument. I don't know right. who's going to get out, but there's no reason to cry. <laughs> right. All of this that was like, this is now like, I think I can move forward and just, I have, I have it focused out now. So thank you so much. 